welcome back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is July 5th, 2020. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. It's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please, in the podcast. Hey, I'm loving it. Hey, hey, how's it going, my good man? It's been a good day. Good day. <laughs> Bad week, but a good day. <laughs> Bad week, but a good day. I, I, like, I like that. I like that for sure. Well, I had some... Oh my goodness, I had so much stuff uh, happen in those last few days. I can tell you that it's been a, a interesting last week. Um, oh yeah. Definitely something that a lot of things I was not expecting happening to me and both my channel and everything else. So, whoo wee ah, It's one of those things. So, <laughs> welcome back everybody. Thank you very much for joining us once again to another episode of the Beautiful Podcast. Um, it is July 5th. Fifth, which technically is the day before Pokemon Go has his four-year anniversary. Happy birthday, Pokemon Go. Everybody, if, if anybody's in the chat, put hashtag Pokemon Go. Happy birthday, Pokemon Go, because this is the game that changed our lives, and this is why we're talking about things here. <laughs> so, it, it's incredible how, how much has changed the game has changed in, in four years, really. Um... Chris, what are your like favorite memories? Think real quick before we really start on the recaps of the week. I mean, it was really cool that they implemented this starter Pokemon as a part of it. Um, a huge shout out to the people that actually kept their starters. I'm one of the people that cares about IVs, so I transferred mine. Yeah, definitely. So imagine to think, um, imagine to yeah. think that your first Pokemon probably was PvP IVs, and then you just trashed it. <laughs> that is possible. It is possible. Uh, that was before we were able to check the um, the little bars, you know. So I, I definitely didn't do that. I just went off of these simply amazing me or whatever. Yeah, honestly. yeah, definitely. It, 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 it's, it's been a lot of changes for sure. And we're probably going to go like a little reminiscing in this day, in this episode for sure. Uh, we do have a lot of news to talk about too. And a lot of things uh, involving just, you know, everything that's going to happen to the month of July. Uh, just a little th- quick recaps and all that, but at the same time, it's it's gonna be a crazy month of July, and of course, we wanna always thank the creators of Pokemon Go Niantic for creating this awesome game. We wouldn't be here we- without them, you know, and we really always wanna say hashtag thank you Niantic, because in the end of the day, this is how we actually, you know, became part of this big universe that we are, we're currently in. I was so. gonna say, I don't think I would've met you. Yeah, honestly, if definitely. It was, if it wasn't for Pokemon Go, yeah, be- I mean, so come on, got our community together. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because think about it, you, I'm a 20 year old guy, and you're like what 22 at this point, and how the heck are we gonna like become friends at this point? You know, <laughs> it's like just Maybe think about in it. Pokemon this. Shield, but I would just like run past you in the game. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like, oh hey, look at that. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, yeah, so, I mean, Pokemon Go has changed our lives. We have met so many wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, we're definitely grateful for everything that has happened. Uh, and, we, of course, we want to just, you know, just, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just amazing that this game has survived for four years. I, just, I remember still the very first days of Pokemon Go and the, the type of, like, amazingness that summer was. Like, 2016 summer for Pokemon Go was probably the most insane summer of all times. Just like nonstop Pokemon hunting, new people meeting new people, going around places you never been, even thought of visiting. It's like it really has changed our lives for sure. So we, oh yeah, <laughs> we definitely want to just uh, remember, the, have that remembrance, you know, for four years worth of Pokemon Go. And we're still, you know, you never know. This game could still go for another four years or more. You know, Ima- imagine this game going to a full ten years uh, sentence. Do you think that we're gonna have like Generation Ten by that point or something? <laughs> They're so slow with it. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, something that's really cool is that they throw in some of the new Pokemon. It seems like whenever they come out with a new oh, generation yeah. to definitely. kind of get some hype for it. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So, it's it's the kind of thing that we just want the most when it comes down to it. And I don't know, so many years, so many things to talk about. But let's get into our recaps of the week. I'm trying to get excellence on this, and you guys probably don't know, but we are in the full Pokemon Go celebration. It's a full force. Uh, celebration but before we actually <laughs> uh, say anything else we gotta remind ourselves that we are also part of the professor network please make sure you check us out at the professor uh, professor slash purify podcast we do things all things pokemon related stuff here we have so many podcasts there that you guys want to listen to 
Uh, you can also put in uh, purifypascat.com. You'll be able to be fully linked to the actual like website and everything. So uh, make sure you check us out there. Make sure you check out the wonderful people that create the, um, the Professor Network. They're such cool people. They <laughs> And they brought us in. So, I mean, come on. Go show them some love. If anything, go ahead and do an uh, exclamation podcast on the chat and you guys will see those kind of things uh, popped up. So, yes. All right. Now that we actually talked about that, let's go ahead and make sure that we go through the recaps once again. <laughs> so, the recaps, I was saying, Pokemon Go Celebration is in full force, just like we talked about last week. Uh, we have, you know, new Pokemon, new Shinies, uh, the flying type Pikachu, which I don't think I have an inventory right now, because I kind of deleted everything before I started the podcast. <laughs> I've got a few. I've got a few. I'll flex it. Yeah. Oh, just do, a, just do a picture. Oh yeah, Let's definitely. Yeah, I forgot about that. I don't know if I had my picture for the day, but is it once a day? I can't remember. I I think it's multiple because I've gotten like two or three today. Oh yeah, definitely multiple. I, I just don't know when it maxes out to be honest. <laughs> I don't either. You got butt bombed. We got butt bombed. Yeah, let me check that beat up before I check that Pikachu. <laughs> okay, cool. Not shiny. Which actually, what we were saying, the new shiny is speed off, so that is going to be the case. Um, of course, everybody who's hunting and is trying to hunt it, but you know, it, it is what it is when it comes down to it. Uh, full force in the beginning, we have new flying type Pokemon, a new flying type Pokemon, as you probably already saw in the cash room a couple of minutes, is uh, Ducklet, Ducklet, right? Mm -hmm. Ducklet is the new Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Um, really not much of a difference from just a regular, you know, bird Pokemon. He has the same typing as Pe uh, Pelipper at that point, and, you know, it's kind of that thing when it comes down to it. I don't know. Have you heard anything about uh, the Evolution Swan Swanets or something in, in, in PvP or anything? I haven't heard anything. Nobody's been too hyped about it. I'll check it really quick, but I don't think it's going to be that good. Yeah. Swan. Yeah, no. This thing is ranked 285 Oof. out of the current meta. Oof. It does have Bubble Beam, though, so keep your eyes out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's gonna change. It's gonna feel like I need to change for sure, and, and a lot of things. And I know we have a lot of people in the chat, guys. I'll get to everybody as soon as we uh, we get through the news and updates on today's. Uh, we just want to make sure we keep on going because this is this is uh, you know a podcast. We want to make sure you give information. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways. Um, all right, part two of our recap. Chris, any shinies for the week aside from you know our stream shinies? I don't think so. I do not think so. Oof. Let me double check. No, still nothing. Not I've nothing. been very unlucky in Pokemon Go, except I, for like IVs. I actually was lucky enough today to get one shiny. As of now. I saw. And <laughs> it was probably one of the best things in the world to get today because it was a shiny I was looking for. I was not part of one of the uh, Safari Suns and everything, but, you know, <laughs> we want to make sure that we... Uh, catch as many shinies as possible. So shiny Tedios are in my bag. So I need another one for the full evolution line, but we'll take. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But yeah, that was it's a nice. Such a clean shiny though, minty yeah. green. Oh yeah, minty green, nice. Well, since we're already in the topic of shinies, and since it's a very first one that we got, how about we evolve it? I know I have it in the pocket, guys, but I want to see the big boy shiny green boy here. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And here big, we go. Big jelly bean, jelly jelly bear. Ooh, actually, that's a, a that's a pretty good shiny, man. I never, I'm not a fan of green, but that's actually a pretty awesome shiny. That's your gummy bear. Oh yeah, gummy bear, <laughs> gummy bear. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. That is actually a beautiful, very nice shiny. I we gotta say that. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's what we're going to go for now. We'll save the other ones for you know another string for sure, another stuff for sure. So uh, definitely uh, keep in mind of a lot of things shiny wise. I gotta spin a stop today. I gotta remember that. Anyways, <laughs> all right, Chris. How about we get into a research topic of today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There we go. So, what is the very first thing that we're gonna talk about today? Oh, this is a sad one. This is a sad one. I know you're sad about it. Mm, yeah. That uh, Niantic has reported that we are not going to get raid invitations until further notice. So yes. keep your eyes out. But ooh. I know. Okay, so raid invitations probably the one number one feature that we want in Pokemon Go right now. 
because of everything that's happening in the world, you know, Niantic has been able to adapt as much as possible for everybody to just be able to raid out, uh, remote raid, uh, you know, not get out as much. You have all the things possible going around. Uh, definitely, you know, something that we want now. And they even said at first, at the beginning of the month of June, they said, hey, we're going to go ahead and get raid invitations out by the end of this month. And we're like, okay, cool. We finally be able to get, you know, people around playing with us 24-7, you everything like that, you know? Yeah, that tweet was not a happy one when I saw it like a couple of days ago, though. <laughs> Uh, when they I, finally implement it, I know we're all going to forgive them. But yeah, right now, we're so ready for it. That oh, my it's God. So oh, my God. Oh it's, my God. It's one of those things that we're just like, we really do need raid invitations, guys. I can tell you for sure that my hype for raids have actually gone down so much. I haven't done that many raids. Um, I mean, one. I think one of the it's reasons... It's so hard. Yeah, one of the things was the Pinsel raid that was probably canceled is because people... I think they didn't want, you know, the... The problems to arise because of them and that's why they don't want like more people in and everything like that so i mean i understand the world is still in in a crisis and they want to make sure they're not like number one in the whole you know okay we're gonna go back to things were that easily so i understand that but raid invitations is such a good feature that we need we want to make sure that we do it with you guys we want to do it live too if we can you know we want to see if we actually have somebody who's able to help us out and at least get one rate in for you guys on live on stream for you guys on podcast but <clears throat> uh definitely uh definitely it's a, it will be a one vision once it comes out and since they're delaying and i'm pretty sure that they're working through some of the hot fixes that the uh, feature needs so it's welcoming oh, yeah. but disappointing so <laughs> i mean like it'll be nice when it's put in very very um fine-tuned and ironed out so there's no problems but there's going to be problems it's niantic come yeah. on <laughs> yeah definitely so i mean i'm glad i'm also glad that they're actually taking their time and, and no matter what happens it's it's one of those things that we want to make sure so uh but yeah that's that's uh, really the smallest re- or the the first real um you know news of today because that was like early in the week and since they did promise us to happen at the end of the month of june we we're all like, okay, even in last podcast, we were like, guys, it's only a couple of days away. What are you doing? Give us an update, something. And of course, they had to, you know, wait a little bit longer for that. I do hope that at least it happens before the end of July. So that way we have a little bit of go- uh, Ray going on GoFest and everything, which would be kind of nice. I'm sure that's their ultimate goal. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. If um, anything, I mean, GoFest altogether is going to be amazing. If anything, their their time period should be like, okay, we have three weeks before GoFest starts. Um, I know that they, they want to make sure that everybody's ready. So maybe a week before they release it to make sure that everything is smoothed out and, you know, all the glitches and things happen little by little. So I do hope that that's the case. So <laughs> um, I do hope that at, at the point of that, we'll be fine. Please give me a shiny on stream. <laughs> and also, let me hit this excellence because I can't hit the excellence. Everybody's actually kind of hating the 50 excellent, uh, the FX excellent thing that's, that's... I was able to do it today. Oh, man. I was. I haven't really actually opened the app that often to say that I've done it. And plus, I have an extra day off after this weekend, so... It's been hard with the flying Pokemon. Oh, like, yeah. The flying Pokemon are the hardest ones for me to hit. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you guys don't know what I'm t- we're talking about, we're actually talking about uh, one of the, the skill research things that are happening. We have to make 50 excellent throws... It's not a hard, it's not an easy task, mostly because you know it's fifty excellence. You know, it's, unless you know your Pokemon, you barely won't be able to actually get a fifty or something. But anyways, I mean uh, that's the one for bragging rights too, though. So you don't have to do it, right? But you know what? I actually I actually feel like there's something going on with that though. Why would they make us do something so tedious as fifty excellent throws and not have, give us like an actual like you know reward for it? It's like. Don't you think that they're, like, kind of secrecy on that? Like, oh, yeah, it's bragging rights. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to complete this before the the end of the week and all that. I'm like... This Pokemon was so impressed. It came to you at Pokemon Go Fest. Whoa. I, know, I, I don't know. know. Yeah, we'll I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I do feel like there's something going on with that. So uh, as much as a pain as it is, I'd recommend everybody to do it. Maybe there will be some kind of reward to doing it. Maybe on the second day of Go Fest. You never know. <laughs> It's like, oh, hey, like the skilled players who finish all the tasks until the end of those three weeks, you get to get this, something or like, you know, it's like, you know, skill players, skill things. 
<laughs> like the rewards for doing it was just so garbage. Like you're spending like I don't know, like two hundred Pokeballs, mm -hmm. and you're getting back five of each. Yeah. Really? No, that's not a good reward. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Really, if not, we're gonna keep on speculating and tinfoil hiding and everything like that. What is your uh, your reward for the speculations? Come on. For yeah. speculations, um. You said something like. There's not too much. <laughs> oh, speculation station. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. That I'm gonna make we'll that stick. It. I'm gonna make that stick. If people start talking about us in the book throw podcast, I'm gonna make that stick for you. <laughs> we gotta have a train animation. A train animation. <laughs> oh my god. In. Oh god, whenever I get that going. Alright, definitely. <laughs> Alright. So we've gone through what you know Nayante has tweeted. Let's go through July's research. Breakthrough box, ray bosses, and spotlight hours. How about we dive into this, Chris? There are some good ones. Yeah, there definitely. are some good ones. I'm excited. So this is from Niantic proper, of or Niantic proper. I'm sorry, Pokemon Go Live proper. So which is Niantic? Okay. <laughs> um, trainers, here's what we look forward in the month of July. This is you know separate from what they already already have going on. So uh, do it's it's like I said, it's a, a month. Word of events, word of things, and since it's the, also the happy birthday of Pokemon Go, we definitely are going to have probably more events and more surprises in the coming days. So hopefully next week it's not just, you know, a dump of news and all that, oh, we're going to do this too. I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So first of all, most, what is July's Bridges Breakthrough Box, Chris? The Research Breakthrough? Yes. Um, it is the wonderful, wonderful Pokemon of Larvitar, the rock skin Pokemon. If you guys don't have a shiny Larvitar, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. What I do don't you mean see too many people getting shinies right now. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a, co I, a couple of people tweet out their shiny Larvitar and all that stuff, which is an upgrade from last month, which was Trampinch. Um, oh yeah, for sure. But I mean, sure. it's, it's still kind of like, eh. I'm like, I'm okay with it. I'm not okay with it. I just, I mean, Larvitar. We had a community day too. I'm like, it's the same as uh, technically it's the same as Trampinch, but it's you know like, meta relevant, you know. Oh yeah, it's a lot more meta. You can actually use it in raids. You can't use Flygon in like anything except Great League, in my opinion. I yeah. don't know. That's just my opinion. Yeah, it's um, one of those things, I guess. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. So. That is a research breakthrough boss. I did claim mine today. It's not a good one, so I mean, I didn't even care at this point. I, I've been kind of like just erasing things I don't want at this point and just keeping what things I probably want to try it eventually. So, is that a shiny? No, it's not a shiny. Dang it. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, our, I do the same thing. Yeah. So, our next Ray boss, and as predicted at this point, is going to be Kirum, the legendary Ice Dragon type Pokemon out there. So, uh, first game Reshiram, then Sakuram, now Kiram is coming to Pokemon Go starting Tuesday, July 7th, which is this next Tuesday, at 1 p.m. PD, PS, PDT, which is 4 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. Uh, Kiram, the bound, boundary, boundary Pokemon, will be waiting for you to challenge in 5-star raids. In addition, there will be a raid hour event featuring Kiram every Wednesday at 6 p.m. time, uh, while it's still in 5-star raids. Um... I don't think I'll be able to hang the first... What the heck? That's an that's a evolution Pokemon. Swallow. Yep. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird that Swallow is, like, one of the only ones that just endlessly flies, like, without flapping. I know, right? Oh, my God. I can't even hit that Pokemon. Anyways, <laughs> what I was saying, before I actually get that up here, um, I don't think I'll be able to get the first right now we're in, but I think I'll be able to do the next two afterwards. So, But the first one is usually the one that counts to so be able to catch this. So that's still going to be yeah. interesting. It's going to be a one and done, basically, for me. Um, but I will definitely try for a Hundo, because I'm pretty sure he gets Icy Wind. I think so. So we'll see how powerful he will become and all that stuff uh, <clears throat> in the coming days. Um, definitely Kirim, another legendary Dragon-type Pokemon that we want. I don't know. I still feel like they might be surprising us for a Shiny eventually, but I don't know. It's it just me, I guess. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I I just can't see them releasing a shiny right now, especially since they canceled Pincer Day. That's true. Like I don't know if they canceled it because of like problems with the raids themselves, or if they just didn't want people getting out. Because I'm leaning towards the fact that they didn't want people getting out too much. Yeah. Um. But I mean, 
I, I don't think they've been too open about that. That's just my theory. So, I mean, at the same time, who's not going to get out for a new Pokédex entry, you know? A new legendary, you know? People want a yeah, new legendary. A legendary Pokédex, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's always good when a new legendary comes around. It's even better when it comes as a shiny, so... Uh, either way, that is our brand new legendary coming in the next few days. Um, we're still have in the midst of Ho Ho this weekend. So, have you done any Ho Hos at all? I tried one, and it just happened to be one that had Solar Beam. Oh. So it, it almost one shot every single one of my T Tars. Oh, it yeah. was horrible. Yeah, horrible indeed. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Kiron arriving into five star race in the next coming days. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I really wish that raid invitations will be up by then, but that's just me wishful thinking. <clears throat> It'd be nice. It'd be nice. All right. So our next in the on our July events, we have Spotlight Hour. So the announcement of Spotlight was have been coming around uh, to every Tuesday at six p.m., which again is part of you know having a lot of different things happening. Uh, Tuesday, July seven. Uh, Taylor will be the spotlight and you'll earn twice the candy for transferring the Pokemon um, what do you think about that Taylor I mean it's a shiny right um, I like Taylor it's actually one that I just got right at the end of one of the past spotlight hours I want to say it was Clefairy oh okay it might have been Bronzor or something though <laughs> All right, and don't choke over there. I know you were choking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm good now. All righty. Um, uh, Tuesday, July 14, uh, next week, Subat will be in the past spotlight hour, and you're only twice experience to evolving the Pokemon. I'm excited for him. Oh, yeah. That is a green shiny I love. Oh, my God. Another green shiny, but another, uh, nevertheless, a shiny I don't have either way, so that's something that we oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely think... It may, we need for sure. Uh, Tuesday, uh, July 25th, Adesh will be in the spotlight hour, and you'll earn twice the Stardust for catching Pokemon. I mean, Adesh, Shiny, and then Stardust. I think, you know, there's a connection there. <laughs> Do you think they were trying for like all green Shinies? Or was that just a coincidence? Uh, good one, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, it could be a coincidence. Could be more speculation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Definitely uh, something to, to talk about. And then, all shinies I love. Right, all shinies I love. No shiny left behind, just like Adroid says. <laughs> In Pokemon Go, yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, Tuesday, July twenty eighth. Uh, uh, I can't even say the word. Bissel, Bissel, Bissel. I can't say that. Oh, weasel, yeah. Weasel, thank you. <laughs> we'll be there in the spotlight. It will earn twice the uh, experience for catching the Pokemon. So, a non shiny one, I mean, it looks like it's more like, you know, uh, they want to give us three weeks worth of shinies and then one to just catch up on a lot of different things. So, that's, you know, kind of nice for them, but still, it's like, eh, no shiny yet. So unless I get a Hondo, maybe not, you know, things like that. And uh, you're typing away in the chat there, so <laughs> don't mind yeah, him. I'm not excited for Buizo. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing to. I kind of tuned out like... as soon as I heard. <laughs> I know, right? Not, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Let's move on. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, but again, don't forget uh, the weekly channels did start on, on July 3rd, so we'll celebrate Pokemon Go's fourth anniversary in a full blast, just like we're doing right now. So again, guys. Have hashtag happy birthday Pokemon Go because it is one of those games that just makes us happy every day. <laughs> All right. It does. Yes, Chris. <laughs> All right, Chris, what is our next research topics for today? Well, if you guys didn't know, we voted for a wonderful, wonderful Pokemon in the form of a gas ball <laughs> known as Ghastly. It is going to be community day for Ghastly. If you do not have the shiny, like a lot of us, you're going to love it. It also gets an amazing move, Shadow Punch, when you evolve it into Gengar completely. Okay. Yeah. And that's going to be on July 19th, a Sunday, uh, from 11 to 5 p.m. local time. So another six-hour six, uh, six so, hour event um, oh, yeah. for Shiny Hunting. It's going to yes. be a fun one. Definitely. So July 19th at 6 a.m. Uh, or 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time. Uh, Gasly will appear more frequently in the wild. And then, of course, if you're lucky, Shiny Gasly will be in your inventory after this. <laughs> if you don't play, uh, still play. You got six hours. 
Uh, just like Chris says, Gengar will know the uh, move Shadow Punch once evolved. And then, of course, I don't get a shiny on that Pikachu. <laughs> uh, take a few snapshots to, for surprise. You know, overall shinies is still kind of nice to see every now and then. If you get one, of course. There will be a special one-time purchase July Community Day box featuring 30 Ultra Balls, an Elite Fast DM, two Incest, and two Super Incubators. I'll just buy it for the Incubators, but I don't know if I want the Elite Box or the Elite DM at this point. <laughs> I, I think I actually skipped out on the last one. Same. I wasn't worried too much about getting the Elite TM or Charge TM, whatever. <laughs> I wasn't too worried about it. Yeah, I wasn't too either, so it is one of those things when it comes down to it. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, there's going to also be a special research story for $1. Uh, the exclusive special research story that is the Great Gasly. Okay, somebody in Niantic really likes the Great Gatsby, and they have to say that pumped, right? <laughs> it it kind of reminded me of the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, too. Oh my god. <laughs> to be honest. It's, if Liz from Niantic is hearing this, I'm pretty sure you were the one who pushed this, didn't you? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> the Great is ghastly. Oh my goodness, just make a book out of it now. Come on, guys. <laughs> it better be great. I know, I'm right? I'm telling you. Oh my god. All right, and then the bonuses will be eggs will require 1-4 hatch distance when placing incubators during the event period. Please note that this bonus will not stack with other active hatches distances. So, as you guys meant, as we mentioned last week, our um, special uh, la, 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 la. special bonuses for the month has been extended to the end of July, and that actually it actually actives a half distance on hatching eggs. However, it will not stack with a 1-4, so you're not going to hatch a 10k in like literally 0.5. <laughs> it would have been nice, but no, no, it won't happen. Definitely going to probably yeah. get more uh, 2k eggs for Ghastly anyway, so it's one of those things that, you know, you, you want to keep in mind when it comes down to it. Uh, there's still, I mean, four, one fourth is, like, great. I mean, you literally just have to put a 2k on, on, on a, a free incubator, and you'll hatch it in less than a, in a, in a mile, less than a mile anyway. So. Yeah, I was going to say, 0.5 kilometers per Ghastly. That is insane odds. I think that's the <laughs> fastest we've ever hatched them for a community day. Uh, there's been a couple of community days with those with that distance, so it hasn't been that bad. Well, I mean, um, for like after they added the uh, shiny chance oh, yeah. for the yeah. like Pokemon. Hey, I don't if, know. If, what you, if you want to get a Shando, get all the eggs in the world, you know. So... <laughs> Oh, we're finding the Shundo anyways. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. In the wild. Oh, my God. A good thing it's a Sunday because I usually don't play it on Sunday or Saturday unless I have to work, but... Yay! <laughs> all right so ready your scary faces for july's community day let's go ghastly fans also make sure to turn in on the adventure seek to take advantage of the four, one fourth hash distance bonus on the community day itself and then of course just be safe out there guys i know it's a crazy time these days especially with everything that's going on again but we want to make sure they're safe we're sorry <laughs> all right so that takes first priority. Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay, so another news that we're actually going around since, you know, this has been a speculation since the last few days and the last few um, images that Pokemon Go has released, but we're going to talk about what's called the Willow Report. Now, I'm going to switch over to the actual report here. Now, this is not strange. This is a storytelling from Niantic, from Pokemon Go proper, you know, telling the story of what's going to happen in the next few days, the next few uh, weeks. Uh, this time around, though, it's more about how the Pokemon... <clears throat> what am I saying? Um, po uh, Pokemon Go's own Team Rocket is finally on the move again. Now, we did hear that, of course, you know, they weren't going to make a move until September. Giovanni wasn't going to come back for another, you know, three months worth of summer. But we knew they were not going to get this feature out of the way that easily. Um, there's definitely something going on. Now, I want to speculate a little bit when we talk about this because I know it's Balloon. The Tingo rocket is actually constructing to catch Pokemons, steal Pokemons. Uh, there's been many images around the uh, around Pokemons Go tweets and everything. Um, there's this whole story where they say that the, the team leaders from Mystic, Valor, and Instinct are finding scraps of what's going on with those. Things like that. So... We know for a fact that this feature is going to go live soon. They go to different gyms, different stuff. Maybe they'll land on gyms. That'd be pretty interesting. Like the last one here says, there's actually an image right here that shows a the balloon going around a gym and a tree. So mm -hmm. that would be interesting if it happens. Maybe because it's just flying on a safe distance in between all of it. So 
<laughs> maybe they only pop up at empty gyms, you know? That'd maybe. be interesting instead of fighting an enemy trainer. Well, we we'll remote see. raiding and remote raiding bites, there's definitely something that's going to happen with this. Um, but I, I mean, there's only been small little t uh, tellings of it. Of course, it's just Pokemon's receiving the blueprints of what the Go Dingo Rockets. Uh, balloon is gonna happen now. This is my theory of what's gonna do. I'm pretty sure that you know the data miners have already discovered something specifically for it. But mm -hmm. if we go to another game called Wizards Unite, there is a night bus that actually takes you to the gyms to do the challenges for that. If we ch change that to Pokemon Go, the balloon is technically that only for Tingo Rocket. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna battle more Tingo Rocket runs? Are we going to just because you know they want to make us more safe? Uh, are they gonna appear once a week or once a day? I don't know. It, it's a, it's really interesting when it comes to to this kind of thing, and just hearing the st the story of it is actually pretty cool because you never know. Sometimes they discover something interesting, fun activities, and just telling a story throughout the game's mechanics is even better. You know, it's, what do you think about this, Chris? What do you what are you speculating at this point? I mean, my personal speculation station is um, that we're going to be getting kind of like auto fighters out of gyms because I know a lot of us have been in gyms for days and weeks and months and even years for some. Uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, we'll see. But um, my personal theory is that Team Rocket might actually fight us out of gyms. Um, I think that's very possible. I think we might see Jesse and James come flying oh, yeah. in. Definitely. Uh, but maybe not so Pokemon Go Fest, you know. <laughs> well, we'll see. But I don't think I think this feature like okay, there's not they're they're not gonna release a brand new feature on like a day or so before Pokemon Go Fest. I'm pretty sure that can no. kinda try to release it a couple of days before, a couple of weeks before. Just to make sure that everything, you know, smooths out and make sure that, you know, trainers are not lagging because everybody's trying to get into the game and things like that. Uh, it's that kind of thing. Now, I mean, golf is going to be interesting, too, because everybody who purchases the ticket, they're going to be playing on that day, especially because it's local time. So that's actually good. At least the servers are not going to get overloaded at the same time all, the, all together, you know. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely have some news before the actual date of golf is, but... Uh, what we're gonna do, hopefully, we're gonna stream either one of those days. I think Chris will probably stream on Saturday for GoFest. I'm gonna try to definitely stream the full day on Sunday and then just have a great time with Pokemon GoFest anyway. So there is your announcement there, guys. It's gonna be dope. Make sure you check us out. If you, uh, I'll definitely put it on the descriptions. I'll definitely put it on the podcast information about checking out Chris and checking out me on Twitch or, or YouTube. We'll definitely make it a good day for everybody to have fun, Pokemon Go-wise and all that, so... So yeah, that's really uh, all the information we have today for news and updates, correct, Chris? Is there anything else that you think that you might have? Mm, for Pokemon Go, not really. For Sylph, there's plenty, plenty. Yeah, definitely. Hold on, let me check Twitter just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. I mean, Niantic is also, you know, partnering with a lot of different uh, companies. They're making... Uh, more advanced technology for AR and all that stuff. Um, not really much that we can get to on that and, you know, things like that. So since uh, we're still a little bit on, we have a little bit of time and before we go to our PvP section, uh, let's reminisce a little bit of what Pokemon Go has come through in the last four years since this is technically a day before their uh, happy year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, again, I always want to feel to go back to the 2016 beautiful summer where I feel like world peace was achieved through Pokemon Go, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, you could go anywhere and there'd be, like, solid, like, 50-person groups traveling around oh, yeah, to, definitely. like, hunt after whatever new Pokemon was on the nearby. And I definitely was, like, you know, looking at some old videos of everybody starting Pokemon Go. I checked out Trainer Tips' second video for the first time ever, and I was just like, wow, that is a change. But he did stick with a lot of his formatting on the video, editing the same way. But still, that was, <laughs> you know, going back to seeing how people were so excited when Pokemon came out. Uh, we had Trainer Tips, uh, Reversal 2, that he, he started, you know, making a big thanks to Pokemon Go. Yeah, um... Mystic 7, which 
he's not a full on flesh, you know, Pokemon fan for the reason that he didn't know anything about Pokemon before he actually started playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> he never played one of the main series games. He never played anything like that. So I was like, it's kind of fun to see those kind of days where he was just like, oh my goodness, what's this Pokemon? And I'm just like, this is just a Pichu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was going to say, it's really cool to see how many people get into Pokemon Go as their first game. Yeah. I know a lot of people find it annoying, but I think it's a cool way to get them to like find a way into the game. Because yeah. there's plenty of people that started playing Pokemon Go and start playing another game, you know? Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people that we know, they they also been in the same position. They play Pokemon Go because it was just popular during the summer, and then they never really thought about looking into what Pokemon Go was, or what Pokemon General was back in those days. Maybe they heard, like, you know, the words Pikachu and all that stuff in that, in, in that case, but... I mean, who doesn't know Pikachu at this point in 2020, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, people that don't play Pokemon, if you don't know what Pikachu is, you're under a rock. <laughs> You've been Come living on. on a rock for 20 years, 22 years at this point. <laughs> Anyways, but that, that's the thing, you know, it's like, it's just amazing how many people actually got aware of what Pokemon is, just from this game alone. And yeah, it was one of those things that just made it available for the entire world, the entire history um, you know, all in mobiles, Androids, iPhones, and we had the technology for it. And But still, you know, those kind of small things that you see now. Aside from the people and aside from the community that has been created for the last four years, I want to hear a little bit more about maybe the features that we had since day one. You know, it's like the first three features that we had since the game started was catching Pokemons, taking down gyms, and uh, hatching eggs. Aside from that, we had nothing else, dude. Nothing else. Yeah, yeah, the hatching eggs wasn't so bad. We didn't have shinies back then. No. So legit, all you wanted to do was evolve, fill that Pokedex, and then what? That was it. That's the thing. That was you all didn't we have had. to fight other people. You just had to fight gems. Yeah, definitely. So it, it's kind of kind of one of those things when it comes down to it. Uh, you see people, you know, trying to take their gym, and they're like, "Oh no, you took my gym. I'm gonna take it back now," and all that stuff. And people were even like posting themselves in like the parking lots of those gyms, and they were just like, "Oh yeah, we're just gonna wait here until midnight until you guys all go to sleep to get take out the gym or something." I'm like, "Who plays like this?" <laughs> Honestly, I'm one of those people. Though, oh to be my fair. god! <laughs> uh, but it was also fun to see like. When a rare Pokemon spawn in the overworld, like a Snorlax, a Lapras, even the worst of them, you know, being a Dragonite or something, and just like, you know, popping around. Oh my god, he got a shiny. Ah, oh my god. <laughs> shiny Snubble. Dude, that was incense. Incense oh, shiny my god. boy. Well, there you go. There's your shiny for the week. Good thing you got it before the end of the week. <laughs> You know, it, it, oh it, it, it's kind of one of those things when it comes down to it. Um, let's see. Let me go real quick on something here on YouTube. Um, well, that loads. Yeah. I mean, just Snorlax, Lapras, even an Aerodactyl. Those were, like, super rare back in the day. And they're still rare now. It's just that we have so many other Pokemons out there that just fill in the gaps for what's rare out there. Like, even myself. There was one Pokemon that I know I had for a while, but still I wanted to get more candies and everything. And I posted mm -hmm. on Discord Always. and post, posted on Discord um, a couple of days ago. But I did get a random regular Axew in the wild, which is a rare occurrence. Now, this was Gold Plus, so I didn't even know I had it in my inventory until I left work. And I was like, oh I'm so my god. I'm jealous. <laughs> Show uh, me the IVs. You said it was bad. Oh, IVs, it was bad. I want to see it. I want to know. It's bad. It's bad. It's serious. It's a serious start and all that. So, it it has uh <laughs> what six ten two like it, oh dear it, lord. It, it, it's gonna be trade fodder at this point for that reason. So, oh yeah. When it comes down to it, it's kind of those things, you know. But rare Pokemon's like that. That's what um makes uh Pokemon Go really what what it's all about. You know, you you see a rare Pokemon and then you all of a sudden you just run to it. You know, people are. Just out there to catch them all, and then once you catch them all, you just want to get all the shinies at this point. So, you become a, a, oh, a, a you become a legit shiny hunter the moment you play Pokemon Go at this point. So, I mean, like even the people that don't care about the shinies, they know they're worth something to other people, so they'll hunt the shinies to trade Pokemon they want, like for raids or PvP, whatever you want the Pokemon for. Yeah. You'll usually collect shinies for that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
All right, so I got the video here, and hopefully I don't get copyrighted as long as we talk about a little bit what happens in, in, this, in this trailer. But I'm gonna put it on screen for you guys right here, right now. And then hopefully it doesn't go crazy on me. But this was the very first time we got a trailer of what Legendary is going to be about in Pokemon Go. And I don't know if you guys can hear, hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. Okay, hold on. I think my computer is not synced to this. Hold on one second. Uh, I may may not be. Okay, yeah, it's synced now. And let's go back. <laughs> so make sure that, I mean, if you guys are watching us, of course, on the um, podcast feeds, you want to just go to the, the trailer itself. But this is, this trailer right here always got me hyped. The moment this trailer like took off was just crazy. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this is like the first trailer that they released like after Pokemon Go became more bigger than usual in the summer of 2017. So a year later, this is this is actually what got me hyped. Now we did have a gym rework, which is the current gym gym uh, system that we have today. Hopefully they'll do a different one eventually. So I'm gonna just lower a little bit more just to make sure you guys can not hear so much about it and hear me too. But yeah, this this was like the first part of it. And we were like, oh my goodness, it's cool. And you know, take off the gym, gym upgrades, team battles, all that stuff, you know, things like that. But then this, this was what got me so hyped. And then the music. Yeah, we can't even do that yet, the team battles. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. And just everyone is getting so hype about this. I know it's just like, you know... <laughs> oh my god, the moment we all saw this, we were like, Oh my god, dude. Just, oh my god. I was losing it. Oh my god. And I, I literally went through this video like 20 times to see everything in it. I, I didn't care what it was. Ho Ho, Lugia, Articuno. Zapdos, oh my god, it was just amazing. It's so cool. I know. This hype, like, this hype got me hyped the moment I saw it. No matter where it was, what you were doing, it was just fun as it was, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. And this was their way of saying, finally we'll be able to catch legendaries in Pokemon Go for the first time in a year's worth of the game's release, you know? It's so funny to imagine that people would be using like... You <laughs> like know, Bulbasaur and yeah, Pikachu. but I mean, you probably only had that thing. <laughs> some people. Yeah, I have seen some funny stuff in raids. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Dude, the first legendary raid was legendary for sure. Yeah. Even, it was. We didn't care about shinies. We just want the decks. Oh my we just goodness. want to get that beauty. I know. And every time I hear the song from this legendary trailer, it's just. It takes me back, dude. It takes me back. It definitely does take me back. All right, let's make sure that we don't get any more copyrighted from all this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, you know that that trailer alone just got me hyped from playing Pokemon Go even harder now. And I even remember the first time the race was really introduced into the game. Not legendaries yet. Legendaries took off a little bit later after the the gym reward system. And then, you know, I was trying to go for Tyranitars that were like, you know, spawning on four stars and all those things. I even remember trying to beat down my first Tyranitar with like three other people who were like having problems because we couldn't do anything to oh, it. Dude, I could not. <laughs> I could not. Yeah, and... That was the first time I came <laughs> into contact with Discord, actually. Oh, yeah. Because of the Tar raid. Yeah, and I was in the Saras... Well, I wasn't in the Sarasota area, but I was, you know, in the brand to Sarasota, and then I started getting more and more groups going around. And then Discord was born for Pokemon Go, and that was, like, literally the history of it at the end of the day, because, you know, coordinating gyms, uh, battles, raids, raid special weekends, um... You know, I, I know we, you know, we had some glitches and some things that, you know, happened in the game and all that stuff, but I can't even remember the first time that Articuno was out, and I was, like, so hard to try to at least get one, and I had that, on that first day, I was raining six or seven that I was going out with a group, and I could not, in my life, could not get one to actually, you know, catch at that point. It was, it wasn't until the Catching second, the in the back, man. dude, it wasn't until the second day where I actually got 
the legendary Arctic Order. And I was like, oh my god, finally I got this after six or seven races. And I was like, I don't care about spending as many passes as it was. I just wanted the legendary, man. It was so high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it took me and my friends a long, long time to actually get the Dex Pokemon. Man. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like, I'm thinking back on it. You had to basically hit it with an excellent throw to even have a chance of catching it. And back then, and the the distance, yeah, the distances for it were just like insane too. Uh, it wasn't that easy to get that legendary. But then after that, you know, you get the trick of it, and you know, you know which one to get. You got, you know, Articuno, Lugia, then Moltres, then Zapdos, and then after that, you know, it was just a bunch of legendaries spawning and five star race. And that's really what the feature really, what I really like of the feature, and what really brought a lot of the community together back again. After, you know, Pokemon Go was, like, you know, dying at this point. Really, one of the things that I really feel like made sure that the game was alive was the YouTubers. Mystic 7, Reversal, Trainer Tips. You know, all of them, in some way or form, they made this sure that this game stayed alive for everybody. It was just, you oh, know, yeah. it, it, imagine, because I do even remember putting it down for maybe two, three weeks before I got my Gold Plus going. Because all my friends were like, oh, I'm level 20-something. Oh, I'm level 20 And I'm just like a missing level 15 or 16 trying to catch whatever Pokemon was out there. But it wasn't as much fun as it was by the moment because I didn't want to catch, you know, a Rattata, Peachy, and all those things that, you know, were just finding regularly in the wild. However, I got my Gold Plus going. And then once I did, that changed. Like, literally was catching Pokemons, uh, stuck in on eggs or stuck in on um, Pokeballs and everything. And it just, you know, made the experience just so much more fun. And little by little, of course, you know, we started doing raids, we started doing this, and, you know, here we are. This is what it is. Um, another big note to come around uh, of the features that we got for Pokemon Go, aside from raids, you know, research task, daily research task, then came trading, and then, you know, uh, and then PvP, which is the big one that came around not too long ago, but... Has that community for Pokemon Go has grown so much, and really, this game has changed our lives for the better. And how many people has actually really gotten to this point is because of Pokemon There's Go. There's so much. There's so much. So now. much for everyone. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, that's really what Pokemon Go is all about these days, and we want to keep continue helping, hoping that Pokemon Go is going to, you know, continue striving for newer things, newer stuff. Even the body system, we haven't even talked about that, and that's still something in the game too, you know. Uh, but yeah, Pokemon Go. There we go. Four years. All right, I think we granted well enough into what Pokemon Go is about. <laughs> Shall we move into our PvP section? Get good, get wrecked. Here we go, Chris. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, yes, so sir. Chris, what is the very first notice on there on our notes there? I believe it is the wonderful, wonderful Catacomb Cup, the final cup of Season 2. Is it actually? It is. That makes sense. Yeah, oh it is. Oh my gosh. Well, in the midst of Continentals happening this weekend and, um, you know, everything else, you know, like Gold Battle League Premier Cup coming up this Monday, um, Catacomb, which is the final Season 2 um, tournament for the month and for the season, actually, um, you yeah. know, they want to make sure that, that we move on. We're probably going to have like a month worth of rest in August. And then we're going to move on to season three afterwards. So time to get ready on that Stardust grind again. <laughs> Dude, I just hit 1 million. And I'm probably going to be down to like 800,000 after building my team. I hit 3 million again. <gasps> Dude, <laughs> very jealous. Definitely, definitely. So yes, so uh, the Cotton Cup Cup. Uh, once again, we have another Buck-centric uh, one, I guess. Uh, we do have dark types, grass types, ice types, rock types, and bug types. And then the Pokemons that are legitimately banned for this are steel types, thank god, <laughs> legendaries, mythicals, shadows, and regionals. Uh, also, uh, we have Scrafty, du uh, Dugon, Alona Ninetales, Obstagoon, and Crustle. They are not available for this cup either, so... Chris, what do you really think about this? What what what's the meta looking right now since we already started? I got, I gotta say, uh, even before they shook up <clears throat> the uh, PV Pokey rankings, they used to have the dark types at the top uh, as well as an Umbreon. Right. I think because of all the practice cups, they moved a few things around based on what people were using. Right. I knew this Pokemon was going to be at the top immediately. Pseudo Wudo. Oh with yeah. Counter. Oh yeah. Hey, um, heavy counter for those uh, bug types. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has Rock Slide for any flyer. Mm -hmm. It has Earthquake for solid damage. Counter's just an all-around good move. So, legit, the first thing I did was think, uh, what can I use to counter Suda Wudo? Um, so, I, I built my team around that, but... Dude, it is insane. Yeah. Like, one of the first things I did is actually number two is Venusaur. <laughs> you want that boy. Yeah, oh, my God. Definitely. So, yeah, it, it's interesting just because a lot of things just counter each other, but Sudo Wudo is the king of this meta. Uh, shout out to Mystic7. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he'll do this one. Oh, oh a lot of people are actually talking to him into it, so maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Cotton Cup is right there for you guys. So it's for the rest of the month. And then finally, of course, we do have a little bit more information on what's going on in the world of PvP. Chris, what is the uh, the next information there? Oh, yes. So Sylph, they usually handle uh, Great League, but they've been starting to do something a little bit more interesting. They're hosting the Go Battle League Premier Cup for the higher rank. I believe it's only for Master it's League master. for Premier Cup. It's Master. It is? Okay. Mm. Okay. I I don't know how much I'm into that, mm. but I think you have to do it to get in the really high ranks in uh, Sylph now, which is really interesting to me. Well, this will also count as your um, ranked battles for the Celt Arena, so... If you do a tournament and you want this to wait on your trainer and your trainer cup, um, then you will you can actually have the premier cup as part of that. Just like you know any other great league like the Catacomb and everything, but this will yeah. actually host it. So that's you know that, it's interesting because we never really got in a master division in Silt Arena, and we always say that it's kind of out of reach for a lot of people. But you know people have been getting into PvP since they won thanks to the Silt Arena. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Silt Arena, for that. Um, and now they, you know, they gain Stardust, they gain things, and then we also have, you know, a lot of Pokemons out there. Luckily, you don't have to spend, like, billions of Stardust on Legendaries because the Premier Cup actually bans Legendaries and Mythicals. So those are out of the picture. So if you want your Metagross, your Tyranitar, whatever else you feel like, you know, a good uh, Pokemon for the Master League is that is not Legendary or Mythical, that will be your source of knowledge. And of course, if you really want to get into it, if you really want to use your 100% Pokemons and your things going around and be like, hey, I want to try this out. I don't have to wave it or anything or just try it out. You know, go into the siltarena.gg or silt.gg and then you'll find a local tournament going to you. So um, really it's something that <laughs> it comes, at, it comes at, at a price. Now, real quick before we get to the next part of the news of the PvP mm -hmm. section... I do want to say that I also did get the invite for regionals this season. However, I was dumb enough to not actually check my emails before then. And of course, I just say, good luck, have fun. I didn't think I'd get invited because the only thing I did was maybe one or two cops in the first season, in the, in the season two. So I was like, I, you know, maybe not. You did beat me in the first Oh, cop yeah. I, I, so they might have saw that and was like, oh, this guy might be a prodigy. That's what I meant. <laughs> All I did was just, like, get the right count. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I even got that into that. Like, what was it? What was the first uh, Celt Arena Season 2 Cup? Do you remember? Um, Sinister. Mm. I think it was Sinister. Sinister. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember just beating you down with my Mawile. <laughs> oh, dude, Mawile with Power of Punch. Oh, that thing was a menace. Dude, I'm, I'm excited. I don't see too much of that anymore. I know, right? I know. But yeah, that's um, that's what it is. And then, Chris, what else we really got? This has been really exciting. I saw it pop up on my Twitter. And I was like, what in the world's happening? So they added a new tier onto the Sylph uh, leaderboards, which as soon as they added Elite, I was like, what's going on here? They added on the legend tier. There is one person that was able to get to the legend tier, and it was not me. It was <laughs> so technical. And the color is white. He was very scared it was going to be red, and it was going to look really ugly. Mm. But it looks very, very pristine. Um, I wish I could show you guys. But I'm, I'm actually, really going, cool I'm actually trying. Look at it. Yeah, I'm actually trying to get into it right now. Um, I don't think how well it's going to show in the actual like stream for you guys, but... Here we go. We only don't have just one. And actually, I got to turn off my camera for this. Oh, there's more now? There is Yo. three people, actually, in the uh, top in the top three. There are three legends now. 
in South Arena. We have from Chile, we have Ben Tsuki, we have from Mexico, Angelino 511, and then from the Netherlands, Do Technical. It's in all three of them, the legends of the Tilted, the very first three legends. And of course, Technical was the first one to actually get um, the legend rank in the, uh, once mm -hmm. the Continental came around, and I did not want to open that. <laughs> but then after that, you know, the Latin American ones came through, and then hopefully once we have their... Um, the ones for the United States and everything, uh, we'll see more legends come up to the leaderboard. We still have the um, the Peruvian too. That's actually like really good. I really like that he's actually like still number five on top of the leaderboards and everything. So yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, look at look at how many people, how many battles they've done. Four hundred and fifty four battles. You know, three hundred forty three seven wins. You know, one hundred and seven losses. You know, it's like those ratios are just insane. And and. Oh, yeah. Number one, he's like a 76.43% ratio, while everybody else is at 80 or 88%. And you're like, well, how is this guy number one? And then this guy's are like number three. You know, it's like, it's incredible when um, it comes down to it. Yeah, I think they do it in like intervals of 50 to kind of encourage people to do more and more battles. Yeah. I, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, definitely. So that is the new legends for uh, Celt Arena. Make sure that you check them out, of course. If you want to get into that, you know, again, Celt.gg is actually a great place to start. We got a lot going on. I can tell you that much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. So... My gold <laughs> All right, Chris. Looks like we ran down for a little too long there. Looks like we won't be able to actually get some battles in for tonight, unfortunately, because we are only a few minutes. That is away fine. From you terrify me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely have some for uh, for what it's to come, but yeah, we'll definitely uh, we'll get some more battles in. Okay, this Rifloom, I'm just gonna go away. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> All right, Chris. Is that angry enough? Yeah, definitely. All right, so we're almost at the end of our podcast. Chris, do you have anything else to talk about or say before we end it tonight? Um. If you guys want to be a part of any of the self tournaments, just uh, give us a shout on Twitter, and I might be able to hook something up with our local tournaments. Even yeah, definitely. Uh, just, you know, give it, give me a shout. Yeah, if you want to get into Pokemon Go PvP, uh, if you don't know where to start, we can walk you through it. Uh, you can always join our Discord, exclamation Discord in the chat. If not, then just check us mm -hmm. out on the uh, on our social medias. Myself at Pure Larry Go, Chris at. Uh, Christo0517. Definitely, definitely. So that's our socials. And again, PvP is an amazing thing for Pokemon Go. Um, and then, yeah, that really is it. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, sticking around for the podcast. I know that we had a lot of people actually talking in there. Unfortunately, I was trying to make sure that we had, you know, um, all the news and updates for you guys. Uh, thank you, Derp, Arabella, uh, Legends, Anima. Uh, the Donald Trump for uh, YouTube, <laughs> Manolito, uh, we had uh, Ben Sion, and a lot of different people actually come around too from I own streams. Thank you so much for uh, checking us out, Julian. Um, and of course, you know, make sure you check us out on our socials, just like we said, Discord if you want to keep on going. Uh, again, we just we, we will check it as every day as possible. You know, I try to make sure that I'm there all the time to for you guys to talk about things. Uh, but yeah, after that, thank you so much for listening. If you want to also uh, check us out in our podcast feeds, you can go ahead and do exclamation podcast in the chat or check us out, of course, in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Our Heart Radio, Stitcher, and many other podcast services. You can also go at BuzzFeed, which is actually the place that we usually have the podcast live. Uh, but yeah, and then, of course, if you want to give us more info, talk about the dates and everything, uh, email us at purifypodcast at gmail.com. You can also text or voice message at 941 417-9243 and of course again we haven't really received any emails yet so if you want to be featured on the show go ahead and check us those emails guys you want to make sure <laughs> but then of course don't forget to check us out at purifypodcast.com which is the professional network website and that is it thank you so much guys uh chris how about you go ahead and take us away sure thing sure thing it's been a wild ride. Uh, we got a lot to look forward to. We got to see what Team Rocket is up to. How much do we got to stop them before GoFest? We'll see. We'll okay. see. Hope you guys have a good one. Yes, Stick have... with us. Peace out. Have a good night, guys.